in this unit, we discuss project seven, in which we build the first part of our VM translator. Now, since this is the first project in the course, I'd like to say a few words about the big picture. And what you see here is the overall NAND to Tetris journey, which starts, you know, if we think about it uh, top down, it starts with some human thought or some fantasies about developing, let's say, a Tetris game or a Pong game or something like this. And then you go through several stages of construction until you end up with a program that actually runs on a real computer. Now, to remind you, we decided to divide this overall journey into two different parts, two different courses. And in Nanto Tetris part one, we've built the hardware platform, uh, which is the host computer on which we can actually execute uh, programs. In this course, in part two, we build the elaborate software hierarchy that sits on top of the host hardware platform and enables us to write programs in a high-level language like Jack or Java or Python and then translate them all the way down into machine language, generating code that can actually execute on the platform that we built in part one. Now, we decided to split this overall journey into six standalone projects, which are numbered project seven all the way up to project 12. And we also have project zero, which is kind of optional and was the focus of uh, the first module of the course. And in this particular module, we're going to focus on project seven, in which we build the first stage of a full-blown VM translator that can translate programs from VM code to machine language. And I also listed project zero because we're going to use some tools that come to play in project zero and they will serve us in project seven as well. Now, to remind you, the VM code is written in the VM language. And the VM language consists of four categories of commands, of which in project seven, we're going to focus only on the first two. So we're going to develop a basic VM translator that is capable of translating VM programs that include arithmetic, logical, and memory access uh, commands into machine language. And in the next project, in project eight, we're going to deal with the rest of the VM language and complete the picture of building the full-blown VM translator. So here's an example of a VM program, which is stored in some uh, VM file. It is actually a set or a sequence of uh, VM commands. And the goal of project seven is to write a program in a language like Java or Python, a program which is called a VM translator that goes through this input file and translates it into assembly code. So here's the translation of the first VM command. And then we continue to go through the input file and for each VM command, we provide or we write the translation of this command into the output ASM file. And notice that uh, just a little detail that I recommend that your VM translator will always emit a comment that uh, specifies which command it is now translating. If you do this, then debugging will be much easier because when you read the produced uh, assembly file, you can sort of see and relate the assembly code to the uh, commands that generated it. So that's the overall goal. Now the question is, how do you test the translation? How can you tell or ascertain that the VM translator actually generates legible machine level code? Well, you can take this code, the code that was generated, and load it into the target platform, in our case, the hack computer, run it, and convince yourself that the code is doing what the source code intended to do. So going back to the overall picture, we can once again take the code, load it into the machine level, and run it. Now, if you didn't take Nanto Tetris part one, and also if you did take it, there's an alternative way of doing it. Instead of using the actual hack computer, we can use a supplied CPU emulator that can run 
hack programs as is and do exactly what the host platform would do for real. And if you use the CPU emulator, you can run it on any computer, including your own PC. And indeed, if you downloaded the Nanto Tetris uh, uh, software suite, you have this uh, program uh, available to you. And we used it actually in Project Zero. And that's why I listed Project Zero as an element of Project 7 as well. So we can use the CPU emulator to test that the resulting code does what it's supposed to do. All right, now I'd like to go through our development plan, which is a little bit elaborate, and explain what we have to do in every step of the way. So first of all, we supply five VM programs, and each one of them is designed to test some specific features of the VM translator that you are building in Project 7. Every one of these programs is stored in a separate directory, so there are five directories that have the same name as the name of the program. And here's an example of one of these directories called basic test. Now, the most important file in this basic test uh, directory is the VM program itself. You know, that's the program that we have to translate. And the other files provide some other purposes that, we'll, uh, uh, that I'll explain uh, later on. So here's the contract. Your job is to write a VM to hack translator which conforms to the standard VM to hack mapping that we described in unit 1.7. Now, you have to use the VM translator in order to translate every one of the five uh, VM files that we supplied uh, in this project. And for every one of these translations, you have to generate an assembly program. And then when you execute the resulting assembly program on the VM emulator, the output file that our script is going to produce from your code has to be the same as the supplied compare file. If this is the case, you pass the test and you can go on to translate the next VM program and go through the same routine. So let me go through the exact steps that I recommend that you go through when you test every one of these uh, five programs. Well, first of all, there's an optional stage that I recommend that you go through in which you take this VM program and you play with it in the VM emulator. And I recommend that you do it in order to get acquainted with the VM program and understand what it is designed to do. Now, it's not really directly relevant to this project because this project translates the program into assembly and the VM translator doesn't really care what the program is doing. It is simply, it views it as a translation uh, task from one file to another. However, if you spend a few minutes playing with this program, it will give you a lot of good context for the subsequent translation task. All right, so the next thing that you have to do, once you understand what the VM program is doing, you invoke your VM translator, the program that you wrote, and you translate it into an assembly program, which is stored in a separate ASM file. Now, the next thing that I recommend you do is take this uh, resulting ASM file, load it into some text editor, and convince yourself that the file looks good. You know, after all, this file was generated by your VM translator, and you want to make sure that it generates some legible VM commands. If there's any problem, you have to go back to the VM translator and fix it and repeat uh, this process. Once you've completed this uh, visual inspection, you can load the ASM file into the CPU emulator and proceed to execute it and inspect the results. Unfortunately, the last stage, stage four, will not work out. And it will not work because the source VM code, as well as the assembly code that your VM translator generated from it, expects to use the stack and the virtual memory segments and there's nothing in the source code that actually initializes these virtual segments and the stack on the host platform. So instead, you have to load the test script, the supplied test script, into the CPU emulator, execute it, inspect the results, and if there's a problem, you can go back to stage one and fix your VM translator. If you use the test script instead of the assembly file, 
the test script will take care of all the uh, required initializations and then the translated code will actually execute on the CPU emulator correctly. All right, now you have to use all sorts of tools and resources in this project and the first thing that you need are the test programs and the compare files. They are available in uh, the project directory on your computer. Uh, you have to experiment with the supplied uh, test scripts. I'm sorry, with the supplied uh, VM programs. You can do it using the supplied uh, VM emulator. You have to translate these VM programs into assembly. You do it by using your VM translator, the VM translator that you are uh, developing. And then in order to test the resulting code, you use the supplied CPU emulator, as we just uh, explained. And in order to develop the VM translator, you need some resources like a high-level language, Java, Python, uh, and so on. Uh, we recommend that you take a look at some tutorials that we provide in the NAND to Tetris website, the VM emulator tutorial, the CPU emulator tutorial, and you can also consult uh, chapter seven in the uh, NAND to Tetris book, The Elements of Computing Systems. So this is uh, an elaborate project and uh, you have all these tools that will help you complete it successfully. All right, now there are some testing challenges that you have to, uh, uh, we have to address and I actually described them already so I'd like to summarize them again. The uh, code that we provide in the VM files is missing what I call the function return envelope. And therefore, this code does not initialize the uh, stack and the VM segments on the host platform. So these missing items will be supplied in uh, or completed in project eight. And for now, we use a test script that uh, plugs, these, uh, plugs these holes uh, manually. So, the test script starts with the usual preamble commands that we don't have to fully understand. It's not, once again, part of the course. Uh, then we have a set of commands that uh, anchor the uh, uh, virtual memory segments and the stack on the host RAM. And then we have uh, a loop that actually executes the resulting uh, uh, machine level code. So we see that we use these commands in order to manually do what project eight will do automatically when we get to work on it in the next uh, module. All right, what I'd like to do next is to recap and go through everything that I said so far in the context of actually using the tools that you have to use in project seven. So this will be done in the next uh, video clip. The purpose of this demo is to walk through the steps that you have to go to when you work on project seven. So I have here my NAND to Tetris folder. Let's go into project seven. And within project seven, we'll go into memory access and into basic test. And let me resize the window for better focus. And we see that what we have here are four files, a compare file, a test script designed for the uh, CPU emulator. Then we have the VM code that we have to translate into assembly. And finally, we have yet another test script designed for the uh, VM emulator. The star of the process here is basictest.vm. This is the program that we have to translate. So let's take a look at it. Well, we see that we have here a set of VM commands which are designed to carry out various operations on the stack and the virtual segments, constant, local, argument, this, that, and so on. So the challenge that we are facing is to translate this uh, VM code into assembly code and then use the uh, CPU emulator to run the assembly code and ascertain that the resulting code actually carries out what the VM code was supposed to do. And so before we actually go through this uh, translation process and testing process, it makes sense to try to play a little bit with the source code and understand what the source code is designed to do. So let me bring up my VM emulator and load into it the uh, basic test VME test script. 
And as I said before, I think in one of my demos, there's a little glitch in the uh, output GUI. So sometimes you have to click the output pane in order to uh, see uh, its uh, or reveal its contents. And so here is the test script, and um, we can begin executing it. So let's uh, do a single step through the test script. And we see that several things happened. First of all, the um, basic test.vm file was loaded into the simulator. And we also see that the test script has created a new output file called basic test.out. I suspect that at this stage, the output file is empty because nothing really uh, happened yet in the execution of the code. And indeed, I can take a look at it. So let's do that. And we see that the output file contains some uh, labels of uh, RAM locations, but no values associated with them. And there are no values because the code did not uh, run yet. So let us now select a fast execution pace and then uh, fast forward through the script. And at this stage, I can kind of uh, sit back and watch uh, what is going on which is rather difficult because the script runs uh, uh, rather quickly. Uh, but now I can go into the virtual segments and uh, the host RAM and explore what happened with this uh, program. And I don't really want to get into this because we already gave quite a detailed demo of the VM emulator. I believe we did it in unit uh, 1.6. And uh, in fact, we illustrated the VM emulator in the context of uh, this very same program. So there's no need to repeat this material here. Instead, I will minimize now the VM emulator and turn to the next step in the project, which is translating the uh, VM test file into assembly. Now, I wish to remind you that the essence of Project 7 is writing a VM translator. And my VM translator has been written in Java. So in order to use it, I'm going to bring up my terminal window and type uh, Java VM Translator. That's the name of my uh, translator program. And then I'm going to supply a parameter, which is the name of the file that I want to translate, which happens to be basic test VM. All right, let's enter this command. And as you see, a new file has been created. And this file is basic test.asm uh, written in the heck assembly language. Now, it may be interesting to take a look at the contents of this file. So let's do that. So this is the assembly file that was created and generated by my uh, VM translator. Uh, let me scroll downward within this file. And I see that altogether it contains about 200 lines of heck assembly commands. Now, I remind myself that the uh, original source VM test file contained about, what, I think 25 lines of code. And so the translation ratio is about 1 to 8. In other words, every VM command generates, uh, upon translation, generates about, on average, about 8 heck assembly commands. Now, it may well happen that uh, your VM translator is better written than mine, and therefore it may generate tighter uh, assembly code and achieve a better translation ratio. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is test that the uh, generated assembly code is actually correct. In other words, I want to ascertain that this code carries out what the source code sought to do. And in order to do this, I'm going to invoke my CPU emulator. So here is my CPU emulator into which I'm going to load the supplied basic test.tst script file, this one. And uh, as usual, I will click my output pane in order to reveal its contents. And let's see. I will single step the first batch of uh, scripting commands. And in response, the CPU emulator has loaded the assembly program that was generated by my VM translator into the uh, emulator environment. It's right here. 
So now I can execute this program and see what happens. So let's click uh, fast forward and uh, now I can kind of uh, sit back and watch the code that was generated by my program execute. And I see that execution continues because there's nothing that tells it to, uh, to stop in the code. And at some point, right here, execution has stopped. And the execution stopped because the supplied test script is uh, programmed to execute 600 clock cycles. And therefore, at some point, it kind of uh, forces the program to stop. Now, how do I know that the program has run uh, successfully? Well, first of all, I got this very nice message that tells me that I have fulfilled the contract. The translated assembly code has uh, passed the test that was mandated by the supplied test scripts. Now, if you're not sure how to use the CPU emulator, you can go back to module zero and uh, look for a unit called, uh, I believe, low-level programming part one. And somewhere within this unit, you will find a CPU emulator demo that you're welcome to look at. And if you wish, you can also go to the Nantu Tetris uh, website, and there you will find a CPU emulator tutorial. So this has been the demo in which we showed you the various steps that you have to go through when you work on Project 7. So to recap, in uh, this project and in this module as well, we began developing a VM translator. In Project 7, we are focusing only on the arithmetic logical commands and the memory access commands. So we develop a program which is capable of translating these commands into machine level instructions that carry out uh, the same thing on the host platform. And in the next module and in project eight, we're going to complete the VM translator by extending the VM translator to handle also the branching commands and the function and return commands. And by doing this, we'll have a full scale VM translator, which will serve as the back end of our Jack compiler. You know, the program that enables us to write high-level programs and translate them all the way down to machine language. So this is basically the end of the operational part of uh, module one. And in the last and final uh, unit, we'll discuss some perspectives and observations about the general notion of virtual machines.